Hi everybody, welcome back to VMware Explorer 2024. We're here at the Venetian Conference Center. This is theCUBE, I'm Dave Vellante. This is our 15th year covering VMworld and now VMware Explorer. I'm including a couple years of COVID in there. We're super excited to be back, double set, and uh, different vibe this year as we've been reporting, but really focused uh, with key messages coming out from top management. And we're here to explore one of our favorite topics, which is the state of enterprise security. We want to dig into how AI and, 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 and specifically security around LLMs is, is changing the threat landscape and what uh, Broadcom VMware are doing about it. We're here with Umesh Mahajan. Did I get that right? Umesh yes, Mahajan. Yes, you did. Thank Umesh you. Umesh Mahajan. Correct. Sorry for the, for the skip there. Umesh Mahajan is the Vice President and General Manager for Application Networking in the Security Division at Broadcom, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's, it's to be wonderful to be here and excited to be talking to you today. So the buzz around, it's interesting, at, um, at RSA last year, uh, it was all about how LLMs are going to help bad actors write better phishing emails. This year, the theme flipped and was more focused on, we actually have to protect mm -hmm. the, the LLMs and make sure that they're, n they're not exposures. How do you see it, the, the threat landscape, uh, AI generally, but specifically large language models um, and the, the GPT heard around the world, how is that affecting security in your world? So I think we were always using AI ML to learn and improve how do we figure out the threat campaigns, the rule recommendations, but we kind of had reached the limit. Along comes generative AI, and with this large language models, suddenly we can model a much bigger model over there and we can look at all these behavioral attacks. And that's what these threat campaigns happen is, we haven't seen exactly the same attack before, so you have to imagine, hey, this plus this and third thing happening is potentially an attack. So now we can model them better, we can reduce the number of threat alerts. If we generate 500 alerts for the SOC analyst, he or she may not be able to keep up with them but if we just give them five or 10, give them the context, hey, this is the threat campaign that's happening along these alerts, then they can ask the co-pilot, which we'll have, a chat box over there, hey, I think this is a real alert, I agree, looking at the context, but now how shall I protect against it? And there itself we will suggest, these are the security remediation policies, you can click on them if you like them, and they'll get enforced so that somehow you're protecting the last part of the ransomware attack. So you're directly affecting the SOC analyst experience in that example that yes, you just gave. Yes, and let's say it's the virtualization uh, guy <laughs> who's running it, Yeah. because the SOC analyst is not the SOC analyst, definitely. This, guy, this person was running the firewall and suddenly he bought this tool to start showing him all this information. Suddenly he can be a SOC, he or she can be a SOC analyst too is giving him or her all the information and then they can take the remedial action. So it'll work for both sides of the house. Interesting point you're making because most firms don't have a SOC analyst, right? Yes. <laughs> Probably half the firms out there don't have a, have a SOC, at yes. least. And so the, the virtualization admin all of a sudden, or the IT manager at a you know, mid-sized company all of a sudden become, has to be a security yes. expert. Yeah, they are a security expert because giving them the context, they can save the context Tomorrow somebody asks them, why did you do this? So that whole chat session, they can save it. Later on, if an auditor asks them, they can show it. Uh, if this is what was going on, that's why I did this. That puts a lot of pressure on you, Mesh, because you're getting audited, right? Because basically, Broadcom told me to do that. So, yes. so you've got to be uh, you know, a trusted partner there. Uh, tell me about these products um, that our audience may not be familiar with, and I'm sort of vaguely familiar with, Avi Load Balancer and VDefend. Um, what do they do? How do they fit into the whole network security stack? Okay, so when it comes to network security, that's what we defend is, right? We have two products over there, the distributed firewall, which is an excellent product for lateral security and micro segmentation. It prevents the lateral movement. We've had that for a decade, widely deployed by our customers. We keep improving it. And the other second product is advanced threat protection. There we have malware and ransomware detection and prevention. IDS IPS, NT NDR, and then we, both these products we kind of surround it with our security intelligence, where we have real-time visibility, real-time analytics, shows 
what is an application? We think this is an application, but why is it talking to these other guys? These are all attacks happening or something incorrect. So lock down your application with these rules and cut off these other connections which are happening. Why are you suddenly exporting these things for no rhyme or reason? Or what, what happened over here? So what we've done is we built an entire security stack with secure visibility, firewalling, and threat prevention. It's one integrated stack, so that gives us the power, like we're not buying security products from multiple vendors trying to stitch them together. It's all one integrated stack, one management policy layer, one UI. It comes in very nicely together, and by having it integrated, you can't let things get in. You know, when you have multiple products, human is integrating them, maybe you're using Splunk to do something, but in between attacks get through. In our case, you have the full integrated stack and it gives you comprehensive lateral security for your normal attacks, separation, and your malware and your ransomware. And that makes it very powerful. Yeah, so um, what you're describing, well, first of all, a lot of seams in those, um, when you cobble together multiple tools from multiple vendors, and if and when they do get in, you're shutting down the lateral movement. Yes. Sorry, you're fencing that off. Yes. And then you can take you know, remedial action. Yeah, I action. went to like a Gartner Summit, security summit in June. They showed what is it for the entire ransomware lifecycle for networking. Right. And we have all the pieces over there, right? You need micro-segmentation, threat prevention, they all need to work together. One needs to feed into the other tool so that there is a, you know, you've closed all the gaps and that's what we are doing. You, you, you referenced, I think, a, 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 a coming co-pilot. We have been writing a lot about this. I mean, a lot of, you know, we call them sometimes agents. We talk about the agentic, you know, AI movement, multiple agents working together on behalf of humans. Security is a, obviously a great use case for this to, to have as much automation as possible at least if it's trusted automation. So tell me about the, the co-pilot um, as part of, I guess it's part of V-Defend. Yes. Where, where are we at with that? What, what is it? You know, when can I get it? Give us okay. the details. So, they, so we have two co-pilots in the security area. One is with this advanced security, right? Uh, NTA, NDR, so the SOC analyst. So that's the one which is going to reduce the alerts and will give you the context and will let you figure out how you should prevent the attacks from happening. The other co-pilot we are working is, is for the security operators. They want to know is, how do I deploy micro-segmentation in this area? Or how do I deploy IDS, IPS? Instead of reading all our documentation and watching all our YouTube videos, they can ask the chat box and tell, you, tell them immediately. Second is, day two. They are operating, they have a problem. They want to know how do I triage it. So we'll tell them, hey, this is how you go look in the security intelligence tool, it'll tell you this is not protected, or here are the logs, this is what's happening. So then the security operators, because there's limited staff, we want to make them much more productive with the second co-pilot. So those are the two co-pilots we have for security. Is that, I mean, what's feeding that? Is that a rag that you've built? What's the data source of that? So we have all our own data. You know, we, we know what our documentation is, we know what our, analytics is visibility. So we use all that information inside, which is in different places. You have to go five different places. Now this chat box, you can just click and it'll give you in one location. Do, do customers ask you, Umesh, okay, I get that. I, I, VMware, obviously great engineering company, but I'm a little nervous if you're using you know, public APIs and connecting to LLMs or open source LLM. How do you address that question? So I think first of all is we are going to keep uh, data privacy in mind. So we are only going to send something to uh, the cloud where the, you know, if you have your own GPUs, like some large customers say, Federal, I'll have my own GPUs, then nothing is going out. Right. But in the case where they don't have any GPUs and we used to have to use LLM model, we are going to keep most of the data on-prem, not let it go there, but just for that model part, we will use the model over there and minimize any exposure. We are not sending the entire data to the public cloud. It's expensive too, yeah. and then you lose the data privacy part. But I have to trust that you're not um, leaking my data 
to no. the LLM vendor or to no. the public cloud vendor, you're taking care of that. Yes, it's, it's our, we are managing it, we are not using some general purpose offering they have, we're just using them as an LLM offering. Got it. Um, can you talk, Umesh, to the uptake of your uh, offerings? I know you've had a number of customer conversations. I'm particularly interested in highly regulated industries, financial services, healthcare, government, where they're the toughest customers because they've got compliance. You know, Hawk talked about the three C's of public cloud cost, uh, complexity, and, and compliance. Um, how are the conversations going with highly regulated companies in those industries? What's the conversation like and what are you doing for them? So they absolutely want to modernize. So they want to use software, private clouds, and you know, products which can help achieve that. But at the same time, they don't want, they want air gap products. By that I mean is they don't want any access to the public cloud because they don't want to go there and get compromised under any circumstances, especially like DOD and other federal agencies, they can't afford to have that. So what we've done is, most of our product used to run on-prem, but for some stuff we were SaaS oriented, right? NDR. So NDR product is now fully, you can run it on on-prem air gap mode. You don't need to go to the public cloud. So that's something very exciting for them because they couldn't take care of the advanced security. So that's already running on-prem, and then the malicious file download sandboxing tool, that we are working quickly to bring that also on-prem. So once we have that, a couple of conversations with some federal customers, absolutely, as soon as you have it on-prem, we are buying it and deploying it. What kind of analytics can I get out of the system? Where do they come from? Does that come, come from Avi Load Balancer? Um, what kind of data can I get in analytics around VCF? Can you paint a picture as okay. to how it all fits together? So we, we have two analytics tools, one security, but one Avi. Let me talk about Avi because we haven't Great. covered that at Terrific, all. Yeah. So in the case of Avi, if you look at it, a load balance is meant for availability of an application, right? right? How available it is and does it scale? So in, when it comes to availability, you want latency is also part of availability because you don't want to use an application from your iPhone which is taking two minutes to respond back. This application is useless and I'm not going to use it. So that's very, very important. So we measure the latency at every hop with the RV analytics tool. And that allows us, and then we keep a measurement. Hey, Anna, normally for the last year, this was your latency at every hop, but today for whatever reason, the latency between the server and the load balancer is up four times. Something is wrong over here, so you need to go look at, did you upgrade the application, did you change the server, or did you put too much loads on the server? Then you can troubleshoot from there, and we pull in data from uh, vSphere, what's happening on the server itself. We have our own data, proxy, because proxy can look at every packet, what's going on, what is the round trip time. So we combine all this valuable data, and we have networking data from NSX. We combine all these three varieties of data, we can compute the latency. And we have a time series, meaning we know what happened last month, what's happening today. Something's gone up, then we'll tell you. We suspect this is what's changed, now go look at it and go fix it. And in load balancing, availability, the faster you can fix the problem, more availability the application has. So our operators really love this tool and it comes in free with our Avi Load Balancer. Makes sense, now if I'm a developer, I might like to take some of that function from Avi Load Balancer, at least the benefits of that, and add value upstream. Um, do you have, what kind of integration do you have, or is there integration with, with Tanzu? So with Tanzu, what we have is, uh, they need load balancing, right? So we integrated with the Bosch, part of the load balance. Uh, Bosch is their equivalent of Kubernetes. So we integrated with that to provide load balancing for TAS, uh, the Tanzu offering. So that, that works very well because that's also software product, software load balancer, integrates nicely and then we provide all the analytics, same thing, for the Tanzu environment. So if they use a F5 or some other vendor's product, they will not get the same speed at how you, you know, set it up and let their developers use it. And secondly, you won't get the analytics and visibility information I talked about. So when, once we integrate with Tanzu, we can provide all that information 
and make that whole offering much more useful to the end customer. And these are, I call them micro SKUs, right? I mean, I know there's four big ones, uh, 8,000 down to four, but then you've got some sort of add-ons. This, this is part of the add-on, right? Can you these explain that? These are part of the add-on, because as customers are deploying VCF, they need security, lateral security, and they need load balancing. So not only are our products fit the virtual private cloud kind of architecture software defined, but they are completely plug and play with VCF. So we are able to pull information out like no other vendor and seamless integration. So you don't need to send traffic to the firewall or load band. So we discover ourselves, we are one company and we hook it up nicely. It's completely seamless plug and play and it's managed from the same console. So yes, we have three add-on SKUs, one for the firewall, one for the advanced threat protection and one for RV. We still have a lot of SKUs, some 75 SKUs we reduced it to three. Okay, got it. Um, so consistent with Hawk's um, mandate, uh, I'll call it, not even vision, it's a mandate. Um, let's look ahead. A year from now, if we're at VMware Explorer 2025, I, I hope the Cube is here. Um, what do you want to be able to say a year from now that you're not able to say today? So I want to make sure that the journey we are on, uh, you know, to provide our VCF customers security and load balancing, that we have much more traction. They feel that our products are not only fit in, in the right architecture, but they are best of breed for them, right? That they are meeting all their needs when it comes to feature functionality, scale, meeting cutting edge security requirements, like we are building the co-pilot and making other improvements in malware detection and ransomware prevention. They feel confident about our products and they are going to deploy them even much more widely. It's all about the adoption. Yes. And, and that integration. Umesh, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to have you. Thank you so Appreciate much. you explaining that. Super important topic, enterprise security, and how it fits into the overall vision that Hawk Tan laid out on uh, the keynote yesterday. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of VMware Explorer 2024. My name is Dave Vellante. Rob Streche is also in the house. Keep it right, right there. We'll be back unpacking the event, extracting the signal from the noise. Right back. <laughs>